everybody out there. Before we get to today's video, I just wanted to show you guys this cool new app that I found online, and that is Yu-Gi-Oh! Dual Amino app. It's a really cool app that you can subscribe to and, and uh, become a part of. Uh, as you see here, I have my own account. It's really cool. Seto Kaiba, you guys can talk and chat to me. But they also have cool things they talk about in cool chat rooms. They have about the manga, the anime, the film that's coming out next year, about the trading card game, cosplay and everything. As you can see right here, they have a whole bunch of cool things you guys can check out about different cards, old school decks, whatever the case may be. A lot of other YouTubers are trying this new app out. It's really cool and I highly suggest that you guys go check them out. Uh, you can download it for free from your iTunes or Apple Store, wherever you get your apps from. But without further ado guys, let's get to today's video. Thank you. Everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, I'm going to be profiling for you my 2005 Scapegoat format deck. Uh, since the new ban list is not going to be coming out till later the end of this month, hopefully, apparently it's got pushed back, so it's definitely probably not going to come out until September. And I really don't want to do new deck profiles, you know, at the time, so... I'm going to be doing deck profiles of some older decks that I have and whatnot and updating them. Um, I do this about once a year and this time we're going to be doing my scapegoat format deck. I do play this deck with my friends. I used to play it a lot when I used to go to Mason before I graduated with some buddies of mine. We used to play scapegoat format every month or so, every couple of weeks when we got bored. It's a really fun format to play. It teaches you how to use, co use card economy and manage your resources a lot better. And it is a slower format, but I just find it enjoyable to go back and play broken old school cards or cards you no longer play because they've been power creeped. But without further ado guys, we'll get into the deck profile. It's pretty straightforward. The format doesn't change that much, but uh, this is the way I build it. I know I've seen a whole bunch of different builds in it with Thunder and Dragon, which is okay if you want to run it that way. Uh, I've seen Turbo Variations. Me, this is just based on what I like playing and my playing style and what works for me. So first off, we have one Jinzo uh, from PSV and we have one Black Lotus Soldier. BLS is your game winning card. These are pretty much your two boss monsters of the deck, but besides Thousand Eyes Restrict in the extra deck, that is really. Um, but your main deck boss monsters are BLS and Jin Jinzo, hands down. The reason for BLS is because the fact of the matter is this guy is your win condition. If you summon your BLS mid to late in the duel, uh, it can be, and your opponent is down on resources, you can just automatically win by the power of BLS himself, and it can OTK sometimes or FTK. Uh, it can set up for very, you know, one-sided matches. Jinzo, on the other hand, you, if you have some back, you, you have some, a good, some good resources besides trap cards, Jinzo is amazing. Um, you still run trap cards even though you run Jinzo because he's just that powerful because the fact that you can shut down so many powerful traps like Call of the Haunted, Mirror Force, Sakuretsu Armor, Torrential Tribute, Ring of Destruction. I mean, there were so many powerful trap cards back then that Jinzo can just shut down and make way for other monsters to just be summoned and not have to worry about back row. And it makes your opponent, uh, for both of these cards, they have to have answers for them, otherwise they are going to lose the duel very quickly uh, if they don't get uh, answers to these cards. But yes, Jinzo and BLS. I've had this Jinzo forever, though. That's from PSV. Uh, Pharaonic Servant Guard, I think it is. Uh, next we have one Air Knight Parshaft. You can run two of this card. I do like it as a one of, as another tribute in the deck. Uh, I don't run too many tributes besides Jinzo and Parsh uh, Parshaft. People run other things. But Parshaft is really good because the fact of the matter is, what you can do is, if you attack your opponent's monster, you can inflict battle damage, and plus you get to tr you get uh, plus one power out of this card, um, which is really nice. It can help you thin your deck, and that plus one that you don't think means so much can mean, be the huge difference in this deck so i do like it as a one of and if you discard it through graceful charity or whatever you can set up in the in the graveyard a light target for bls because back in the day you ran bls and everything because it was that powerful but bls and jinzo are both at one at the time so that's the reason why we don't want more of those cards but uh yeah one air knight parshaft uh next we have two exon universe now i know this card is situational somewhat but it really helps against scapegoats. It's kind of like, kind of like a mini Air Knight Parse Shaft uh, that took battle damage. It's an 1800 beater. Uh, you know, I, I like it. I like the card as a two of. Uh, would I run more than two? No, I like it as a two of. I've bounced back between one and two of this card, but at the end of the day, I do pr prefer two Exon Universe. Uh, this card did not come in really to light in uh, gate scapegoat format. Actually, if you guys are wondering this, it came out in the tin promo. Like in late to like October or September of 2000 and uh, 
five, I believe it was, but it's a very good card. But it's still, I like it as a two, uh, no more than two. Because it's downsized, I can lose attack when it's, it's attacked, so, you know. It's good, but I wouldn't run a lot of it. Uh, next, I run two Magician of Faith. I believe Magician of Faith was at two or three at the time, I forget. I'm trying to recall the 2005 ban list I go by mainly uh, for April that, of that year. But two Magician of Faith, it's very good. I mean, you have so many powerful spell cards you can add back to your hand from Mega Morph, you know, Mega Morph to Scape Harry Storm. Mystical Space Typhoon, Scapegoat, Nobleman, a Crossout, Delinquent Duo. You set this, you activate Delinquent Duo, you go off of it, then you set this, get it back to your hand. And the main play that I always love going for is, you. I usually find that when somebody goes for Magician of Faith, they go Pot of Greed, Magician of Faith, and then get the Pot of Greed back to their hand, and they go plus, pretty much, you know, plus two, uh, or draw four cards deeper into their deck by that means. It's they usually win the duel. It's an auto win. This card can be an auto win card. It's very nice. The problem is you have to set it properly. Uh, the problem I see a lot of players do is they'll set this card at the start of the duel as soon as they go off. And if you have a nobleman or cross out, you just cross it out. And you lose that effect. You lose that advantage. So what I usually try to do is I'll try to bait the opponent to use the nobleman or cross out. So before I set this card, what I'll do is I'll be like, okay, well, let me set an Exxon Universe or some of that nature, something like a Mystic Tomato or whatever else I have in my hand, I'll set it, and then I'll try to bait them to use their uh, Nobleman of Cross out, and if they use their Nobleman of Cross out, then I'll go set my Magician of Faith, and then I'll grab back that Pot of Greed, because people usually, when they see a face down card, they automatically think, oh, it's a Magician of Faith, and they'll try Nobleman of Cross out it, that way they don't have to worry about you getting that plus. So, that's just from experience, I don't usually set it right away. Uh, next up, I have one Morphine Jar I do run in the deck. Now, Morphine Jar at the time was out of a turbo pack, out of a, a tournament pack. It was like a $70 card. I remember back in the day from my personal experience, I never owned it. I mean, I did play back in this era uh, in scapegoat format, but there were other decks. Uh, another deck I played at the time before I, besides scapegoat, I played um, a Warrior Toolbox with Marauding Captain and Don Zaluk and those guys. I did play scapegoat a little bit with my friend, and I did play with the deck out of a couple of locals and a regionals one time but this that was like 10 oh my gosh that was 11 years ago oh my gosh <laughs> but yeah uh morphine jar you can still run in the deck i do like it because if you're low on resources the fact that i can go this and then flip it up and draw five new cards is amazing yes your opponent does gain that advantage but it can disrupt their plays i have found very easily and in dire situations it sometimes is very useful plus it's a noble, no, another nobleman of cross out target for your opponent that they'll be like oh it's a magician of faith nope it's a morphine jar uh, thank you. Now I can set my Magician of Faith and go off. Uh, then for some one-ofs I run, there's a lot of one-of monsters I run because they're either limited to one or I just like running them as one-ofs. The first one is Dakochi. Uh, I love this ulti first ed one that I picked up, uh, oh gosh, years and years and years ago, like like seven years ago. Um, then Azura Priest, Mystical Tomato, and uh, we'll talk about some other ones in a second. So. Mystical Tomato is another like floater in the deck besides Sangan. I'm sorry I keep holding my cards, but I'm trying to explain them as I'm talking uh, with this deck because nobody plays in this format unless you play Scapegoat format. But Mystical Tomato is really nice because it's another floater. It's another dark target for your BLS, and it can help you get things out like I find like your Sangan or your Spirit Reaper to stall out. It's just a nice little card to have. You don't need it but uh, it's nice to have. So I do like that. And sometimes it's really nice because you can just summon it and it has enough attack where it can put in some work. But if it gets destroyed by battle, you get a search off of it. So it's nice. Azura Priest is another light target, which you can send to the graveyard for BLS through Graceful Charity or whatever it means. But at the same token of time, it can help us you know, get around scapegoats. So if your opponent flits the scapegoats, you can be like, okay, well, to get around this, I'll summon the Azura, Peace, uh, Azura Priest and just kill all those scapegoats off. Uh, Dakochi, I just like it for its plus one power and plus it's a uh, 19 beater. I've had players another target for, you know, uh, Nobleman of Cross Out. Nobleman of Cross Out, I have to admit personally, in some regards, is the most powerful spell in this format because there's so many powerful flip effect monsters like this and Magician of Faith and Morphine Jar and some other ones that Nobleman of Cross Out can determine games, literally, straight up. Uh, it can make a decent hand bad if you cross out the, their powerful set monster they did. But Dakochi is really nice because it's a plus one and it's a night it has a you know it's just really nice to plus off it. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll set it and then if they didn't destroy it I'll flip it up, draw a card, tribute it off and get a Jinzo out on the field or something like that nature. 
Um, it's really, really nice to have as a one of. I wouldn't want it more than one of. I know people like sometimes running triple Dakochi with third Dakochi, and even back in the day, I ran Dakochi in some decks of mine. It's really nice to have. Um, Dakochi, the battle uh, locomotive. It's just a nice little plus one engine that can help you lead into tribute fodder and bait out cross noblemen of cross outs. Azure Priest kills scapegoats, Mistal Tomato, like I said earlier. Uh, floater. Uh, other one else we run is one DD Warrior Lady because it was limited to one, one Spirit Reaper, one Sukiyomi, and we'll leave the last three for later. Uh, Tribe Infected Virus. So DD Warrior Lady was at one, Spirit Reaper was at one. I can't remember. I don't think Sukiyomi was at one. I think it was actually. I know Tribe Infected Virus was at one. I just can't remember all the monsters that are on the list. But um, yeah, DD Warrior Lady just helps you get around problematic cards. It helps you get around Thousand Eyes Restrict. Any powerful monster in your opponent's extra deck, it helps get around you. They're Jiznos, or they're Jizno, uh, they're Jinzo, uh, whatever you want to call them, and you'll be at the BLS. So any powerful monsters, DD Warrior Lady gets around and just banishes it, and it can turn the tide of a game. Spirit Reaper's a stall card that if you if you wipe your opponent's board, board clean and attack with your Spirit Reaper, it's not just a stall card. It can pick a, a card out of your opponent's hand, so you get a little bit of hand control in that. Tsukiyomi is just a nice card. It can help get over big opponent's monsters because they'll have low defense. So it's nice in that aspect where you have another monster in the field, you Tsukiyomi, put that card down face down, and then activate an effect like Nobleman of Crossout. That's a little play you can do. We can go Tsukiyomi, put a card face down, activate Nobleman of Crossout, get rid of that card. Tribe Infecting Virus, it's just a good card in general to have because it can clear boards for you. So, yeah. Those are those monsters, and the reason I run them. Uh, your last three monsters you run is your one Breakthrough Sword, uh, Break with a Magical Warrior, one Sinister Serpent, and one Sangan. Uh, Sangan, it's staple. I mean, you, it searches literally just about anything you need. Sinister Sturpin just works off a lot of your discarding outlets you have in this deck you have. So it can help. You can use it in Metamorphosis uh, to get your Thousand Eyes Restrict out. You can use it with Tribe Infecting Virus. You can use it off. Um, it's a nice thing if you put it like for Graceful Charity so you can get cards back. Uh, there's just a whole bunch of ways. The fact that it's kind of a floater and keeps recurring means that it has some some good uses for it. And Breaker, MST's at one, and you only have one Heavy Storm. Breaker ba breaks back row. I mean, that's literally what Breaker used to do. You would go Summon Breaker, Breaker break, Breaker break the back row. So it's a nice one of, it's a 16 beater or a 19 beater that break, that can help you get over things. So, yeah, definitely staple as a one of, and very powerful card at, in this time. Uh, next, I run two Megamorphosis. Some people like running three Aqua for a two. This helps you go into your extra deck min mainly. This is, I mean, you wouldn't run an extra deck if it wasn't for this card. So it literally helps you go for Thousand Eyes Restrict and all these other guys, which I'll go over in a bit. But uh, not the scapegoat tokens. <laughs> but it helps you go for Thousand Eyes Restrict mainly and some other cards, uh, depending upon the situation. But uh, two uh, Megamorphs. And you can recur it back to your hand through uh, Magician of Faith if you want to. So, yeah. That's a thing. Uh, some of you, there's a lot of one of spells because a lot of them are limited, but let's go over some of them. We have one Heavy Storm and one Mystical Space Typhoon. You wouldn't, I mean, Heavy Storm clears back row. MST, it's your one for one removal. Both of these cards were limited to run. You wouldn't, if you could run more, you would run more. <laughs> uh, two Scapegoat, uh, more than two is a, a lot, but I like two of them. Uh, you do have to watch out for those ex Exxon universes and those, you know, Air Knight Par Shafts, but besides that, it's a very good stall card. And you can help go into Thousand Hours Restrict and whatnot. And uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of other little things you can do like that. But yeah, two scapegoat. Then I run, the, I like I said, I think it was one of the most powerful cards in the mirror map in, when you go in scapegoat against scapegoat decks. Because I don't see people running burn decks from back in the day with some to warrior toolbox usually. Uh, or some beat down strategies from back then. They're mainly just running another Thousand Eyes Restrict, you know, Megamorph build. So, in those mirror matches, Nobleman of Crossout is amazing. I got my old supers out to put in this deck, but uh, yeah, very, 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 very powerful card uh, in the mirror matches. So, once in a while, you run a guy that you know is running an old school deck that you're like, yeah, I don't mind playing Scapegoat, but usually it's another Thousand Eyes Restrict build. Some other one for ones we run is one Delinquent Duo. This card just bailed, it came off the ban list, I think, in April of 2005, and then went back on like a year, la like a year later or something. It was on for it was on the ban list, got banned, then came back, then went back on, uh, just like Snatch and Steal. One Book of Moon. Sorry for the dogs barking in the background. One premature burial. One lightning 
Vortex, and I'll go over the last couple of ones in a second. Delinquent Duo, you always want to try to get your opponent to discard their uh, Sinister Serpent first, so I'll have them waste that card before you activate Delinquent Duo, otherwise you're not going to get the benefit plus off of it. But it can really help in situations where you're just trying to limit your card's opponent's hand. It's very powerful. Book of Moon, a good negative plus one. Premature Burial, good card. Lightning Vortex, a good card. I mean, just good staple cards here, guys. Nothing much to say. Snack and Steel wins games. Swords of Revealing Light, I like the card. It comes in handy. Stall out. Your draw cards, you have Graceful Charity and Pod uh, Pot of Greed. Staple, staple, staples. All one ofs, I think, at the time. Just good one ofs at that. Uh, for traps, we run One Ring of Destruction, One Turn. Uh, Torrential Tribune, one Dust Tornado. I run this because MST's at one, and I like moving my opponent's back row. And sometimes you use the effect to set cards, which is nice. One card, the Haunted, and two more I'll talk about in a second. But these are pretty much good staple traps at the time. You want to call the Haunted, I would have more of it if it wasn't more, more than one. But it can help bring things back, like Sangan, and do some stupid plays. And then some battle traps. I run one Mirror Force because that's at one, and one Sakuretsu armor. You could run more Sakuretsu. I've seen other people do that too in scapegoat duels, but I just prefer the one of. On to the extra deck guys, which is pretty big. Uh, I ran a, now at the time. I believe the extra deck was still unlimited, but I always run a 15 card extra deck just because it makes things easier. Uh, you run your three Thousand Eyes Restrict. Uh, Scapegoat format, Thousand Eyes Restrict format, broken card. It's back off the ban list, but I still have my old three that I picked up ages ago and still had a couple in my binder. So, yeah, three Thousand Eyes Restrict. Uh, do, do this, these are just some other targets that you do run just in case. You run one, uh, how you pronounce this card? Oop, sorry guys. Uh, Dragon the Wicked Knight, one Dark Flare, one Gatlin Dragon, which sometimes can win you games. This card I run just because I love it. Uh, Magician King, the Rock and Roll King, I guess you want to call them. But those are some cards you run right there. Uh, Gatlin Dragon's the best one. Magician King you sometimes go into. You just go into them if you need to go into them. Say you need to make a bigger beat stick to go over something to win for game. You have them there in case you have them. That's why you have the Vanillas in there. But mainly you go for Thousand Eyes Restrict. Dark Blader here, which I'm about to show you, is one card that's very good. Uh, Reaper of the Nightmare is another good card that you can go into. Um, for Fiend, Skull Dragons, another card I love going into. Um, and then I'll show you these other ones here in a second. But these are just some other ones you go into. This card can win you games. It's very underrated. This card's pretty good, and this card's pretty good too. Um, but yeah, I don't. I, mainly I go for Thousand Ashes Tricks. Sometimes you go for these other guys if the need arises. It's very rare, but sometimes you do. Say you pull an Air Knight Parshaft, then go over to the Fiend's Skull Dragon. Uh, we have Dark Two Dark Bader the Terrible. I just like running two of it because I didn't know what else to run, but two Dark Bader. Uh, two Reing Kushan, a uh, very good card here. Dark Bader really stops some co cool things as well as Reing Kushan. And then lastly, I won one The Last Warrior for an, um, another planet, which is you don't usually go into, but he's there if the opportunity arises. That's what, what this extra deck is. Mainly you go for your Thousand Eyes Restrict because it wins you games, but sometimes you do go into these other guys if the need arises or if you're trying to just set up a powerful board. But yeah, those are the guys you run there, guys. And uh, then we just have all four Joey tokens. Joey number one, Joey number two, Joey number three, and Joey number four. They just look like Joey Wheeler, so that's why we call them the Joey tokens. But yeah, uh, that's all you need to play scapegoat format. It's a little bit expensive now because Thousand Eyes Restrict has gone up in price and a lot more people, I find, play you know scapegoat format, quote-unquote, nowadays. I mean, there's other cards you can run in the extra deck if you wanted to, like Ojama King, if you want to build more of a, you know, you don't care how many cards you run, or any good fusions from back in the day you could run, but Ojama King's another one for defensive purposes, but I don't run it anymore. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a straightforward deck. It's really fun, and... I've been playing a lot of it online when I was streaming a lot more often, and just playing with my buddies, it's a fun format to play. Uh, it, it teaches you a lot of valuable skills in Yu-Gi-Oh!, especially if you're trying to learn things and you're an old school player. It, it will teach you a lot of things and you know get you up to speed, and I guess you say it, it teaches you a lot of valuable skills in Yu-Gi-Oh! that you can't acquire nowadays to be a better player, I found. But that's just me. I, I'm not trying to you know park up scapegoat for me. I know some people are like, oh, it's stupid, but I like it. Because it brings back good memories and it's fun to do, and I t it, it sh it's a good way of shaking the rust off and, and uh, expand your card pool. But there's a whole bunch of good reasons. But there's a whole bunch of negatives that people don't like. But whatever. 
Hope you guys enjoy this deck profile. Go scapegoat format. Go old school formats. There'll be a couple old school decks I'll be profiling next, guys. But until next time, take care. Have fun dueling. Good luck dueling. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.